So, hello there. Time, I guess, for a little just rant. This is going to be a little rant on the topic of privilege. I, I thought to make this rant primarily because this privilege argument, this bullshit, this insipid, mind-numbing, cringe-inducing, soul-crushing, intellect-destroying, suicide-inspiring bullshit is just seemingly so pervasive in our society these days. And I say our society, what I really mean is within societies of slack-wit individuals primarily lingering on college campuses, probably hanging around in their dorms, staring at their stacks of unread Marx and Chomsky books, wondering exactly how it is they can create a hashtag that'll change the world. Now, these same simpletons are the ones who so often like to sort of take to, primarily in the internet, but also to picket lines and protests, to tell other people, oftentimes of their own race and sometimes of their own gender, how there are just things that they cannot understand because they are experiencing privilege. Privilege. Simply by being what, in many cases, as noted, this same person is. Now, this all kind of comes down to this whole issue of lenses. I think Sargon put it really well. I used to say, to, I used to go with the toolbox analogy. But in reality, it is about lenses. These children so often see the world through these lenses, which are quite often crafted for them by bullshit academics, people who maybe grew up in the 70s or maybe even the 80s, who themselves probably grew up quite privileged, quite affluent, had the great opportunities to just go to college and did so at a time in which coming up with or creating your own major and then just sort of following that as part of some nebulous liberal arts sort of study and then saying that it was a defined science with very specific insights about the nature of society was just something that they could do they could carve out a little niche for themselves within academia I'm a gender studies theorist. I'm a critical race theorist. I'm a women's studies professor. I teach a class in social justice and oppression, etc. These initial batch of imbeciles, raised on notions of the old civil rights, which were righteous struggles in their time, but themselves finding really little to actually fight for, finding that the real issues that they were faced with, such as you know, corporate corruption, government, a global war state, intelligent services toppling foreign governments for very ill-defined and sometimes ill-gained short-term strategic goals, that these were all really, really complicated issues, things which are really, really hard to grapple with and get their heads around. So instead, they went into gender studies or critical race theory. And especially during the 90s, during the last political correctness craze, this same batch of imbeciles was able to really dig that niche even deeper, give it some real roots, so that it could last when the inevitable backlash came around and said, you're full of shit, shut the fuck up, go the fuck away. So here we find ourselves again, now faced with an even duller batch of dimwit fucktards who are just convinced that it's not racist to be racist against people, but it's in the name of social justice that they need to base their judgments of people on their race and their gender and their sex. It's a fantastic form of doublethink, which if you really linger too long on to try and actually see the logic behind it, you will probably get a migraine and maybe even have an aneurysm. If you have an aneurysm and you die from it, good for you. You are free from this world in which these retards exist. But beyond this, getting back to privilege. So twice today I've had some rather simple-minded idiots try and come at me with what they undoubtedly thought were very well thought of, very well rounded arguments about the nature of privilege and power within our society and that I needed to check certain privileges and adopt their point of view in order to see the world clearly. Now, I for one have never been the type to sort of think that the best way to get a 
solid view of what's in front of me was to sort of stand on my head, close one eye, and peer through some sort of pinhole at the bottom of a solo cup. But hey, <laughs> that's just me. I'm a white male. I'm born with the privilege of being able to just stand up and look around at things. But the first came in the form of this unfortunate... Well, this unfortunate little lamb from, I think it was Los Angeles. Now, ironically enough, this imbecile decided he was going to put a quote from Winston Churchill into his Twitter bio before he decided to go off on a tirade about how white people everywhere need to accept responsibility and culpability for the fact that this nation was built on oppression and that everything in their lives they have to thank to that oppression and that they owe communities of color a great deal for the oppression that other white people in the past affected upon other black people in the past. The sad thing I found with this argument wasn't so much that it was a very simple-minded and ultimately racist argument which said that all white people are responsible for the plight of all black people. Because by this very same logic, it would say that all black people are also moderately responsible for the plight of all black people. Or that all West Africans were responsible for the plight of all slaves, as were all Arabs. Or in the cases I let him on to later, which ultimately resulted in a block, of course, was that all Germans, and even going back further, all Egyptians were responsible for the state of affairs regarding all Jews. It was in the course of the conversation with this thick imbecile that I just kept coming back to these questions. It's not just about how is judging one group according to their race not racist, but how is it that when you've adopted that position and you've even accepted that it's not racist, that you can claim doing the very same thing in any other capacity with any other race or any other even individual is itself also not racist. You can take all white people and say that they are all guilty for all of the oppression that every black person or person of color has had to endure throughout the history of the United States or the UK or anywhere else. You can say that. It doesn't make it right. But at the same time, how is it, for instance, that perhaps a, a white Jew whose family came over trying to escape the Holocaust in the 20th century and perhaps lived in New York, carving out a small niche doing leatherworking until after perhaps a generation they were able to make their way as a lineage into academia, into college, to work in a field of, let's say, social work and do things such as march with Martin Luther King and try and end segregation, and then continue working within those communities. Can you blame that white Jew whose family never benefited from slavery, whose family never enforced segregation, and whose family ultimately ended up working to end the segregation, which they had no part of to begin with? Can you blame them at the same time? And this goes for really any family that's come over, or really any family that was here even before then. As we all know, the Irish were never all that well liked, and the Italians themselves were also typically, at least especially in terms of cities, cordon off and made to live within their own areas. Now, naturally, as I'm speaking to my own audience here, as I'm speaking to my own YouTube channel, it doesn't really require much in the way of argument or really any argument at all, to demonstrate to you what a dumb and simple-minded, fallacious argument this is. That would just be a waste of time. You can all see it. But at the same time, it comes back to the same sort of imbecilic, simple-minded, identitarian supremacist thinking when it comes to dealing with feminists. The only difference I notice, though, is that instead of, for instance, perhaps a pudgy male feminist social justice warrior trying to flagellate himself publicly on the internet and virtue signal to the world that he's very sorry and he's willing to strip the flesh from his back and give his life 
to just acknowledge that any good things that came into his life were as a result of past racism as opposed to perhaps his own personal privilege or perhaps, oh, maybe his own work should he ever put any in. Whereas we have that with that self-flagellating, prostrating, pathetic, insipid male feminist social justice type. And, and I suppose another fair term for it would be perpetual virgin. But where we have that on the one side, on the other side we have the strong and bold and, let's say, frankly, entitled feminist. The one who can never, while in the midst of a whole screed about rape culture and patriarchy and fighting for equal rights, cannot name a single right that women have that men have that women don't in fact that seems to be the single killer with all of them if you ever ask a die-hard radical feminist especially one who likes to post let's say oh, lists of male privileges that they typed up on their um oh give me just a moment here that's right uh as.utexas.edu <laughs> Till the CM Casey slash diversity slash male privilege PDF file folder. If you have someone who comes to you like that and you ask them, what rights do you not have that I do? If you're lucky, they won't block you. Maybe they'll talk about man spreading or they'll mention rape culture until you give them criminal justice statistics showing that sexual assault has been on a steady decline for over 20 years. But the really fun thing comes in is that when you challenge the notion of, let's say, equality, and you ask them, do they stand for, let's say, an end to alimony, or default shared parenting in terms of divorce and separation, well, that's usually when the block comes in. This is really just a rant because these people are starting to give me a migraine. They're starting to make me wish the entire world would just burst into goddamn flames, and that perhaps some... Amino acids and basic proteins might find themselves in a puddle somewhere so that it all can start over again and maybe we can not get it wrong. Not get it so very fucking wrong. Yes. Today, that's not every day, but today. Today the social justice scenes, the intersectional feminists, these pathetic, weak-willed, spineless little college imbeciles have actually gotten me to a point where I want to see it all just burn down and then start over from the most primordial ooze there is. I used to think religious fundamentalists were as bad as it got. Boy, was I wrong. I was wrong from the beginning. On that one, at least. <laughs> and the worst thing is, too, is I... Part of me almost wishes that this is as bad as it'll get, but I know that it'll probably just get worse as the identities continue multiplying on Twitter. They used to say this kind of shit was just something you found on the internet. And granted, this is something you still mostly find on the internet. But at the same time, this is also something that you see populating the halls of student unions and student governments throughout campuses all across the country, all across the United States, throughout Canada, it's happening in the UK, it's happening in Australia, it's happening throughout Europe. This entire generation with nothing to actually work for, with everything handed to them, with this notion that the entire world is just the uh, click of a button or perhaps even just the flick of a tablet away, that, that they have been forced somehow to seek out notions of privilege and oppression that they can fight against and for, and vice versa, and try and save the world from boogeymen that they have created in their own sick heads, all the while ignoring the real villains out there, ignoring the real problems that face this world. Atheism has been corrupted by this shit to the point where it's no longer opposing the negative things that religion imposes upon society in various parts of the world or even throughout history, outside of how it fits this anti-white, anti-male, anti-straight narrative in which there is a new nigger, a new kike, a new Jew question, if you would. 
Outside of that, it won't touch it. It won't touch radical Islam. It won't look at forced genital mutilation. It won't look at forced child brides. It won't look at honor killings. It won't look at jihad. It won't look at those things because those are oppressed people. And the only reasons that they're doing those things is because they're oppressed. Much like this, um, I believe it was Dutch. I think it was a Dutch member of parliament who was forcibly fucked up the ass. And this, this, this insipid little shit was just so brainwashed that he turned around and tried to say that he felt bad for the man who raped his asshole. Because this Somali who raped his asshole was sent back to Somalia. And that the rape was, it wasn't about sex, it wasn't a gay thing. You know, it was about that this man just, just never had a chance in the world. I'm sorry if anyone... I don't give a fuck how poor someone is if they try and rape me in the ass. I'm gonna fucking kill them. Period. I'm not gonna feel sorry for them. But this is the thing. It, it goes to the point where these, these neo-progressives are feeling bad, feeling sympathy, feeling empathy, feeling supportive of rapists, murderers, terrorists simply for the fact that they feel it's the best way that they can check their privilege in public and virtue signal to the world that they're a good progressive. Fucking kill me. I used to stand for liberal principles. Before all these slackwit puppets were even in college. Hell, before half of them were even in high school. I was working in D.C. getting shot at trying to help elevate communities of color, impoverished, marginalized communities who'd been ignored by the city and the federal government, who'd been compacted and compressed as genuine issues of gentrification took over the city. As I was working to try and help the residents of certain neighborhoods fight that, and I was getting shot at, these children were being sort of indoctrinated into this nonsense, which by the time they got to college was practically a fucking religion. This rant could go on and on and on, and it probably will, and it'll probably actually just be the first of many, because the more I see this shit, the more insipid it is. The reality is, is that this is a situation in which I can stand before a person such as this radical feminist or this, this, this flabby male virgin social justice warrior who just wants to publicly shame himself for what white people a long time ago did to black people, which he had nothing to do with, while also at the same time failing miserably to address the actual issues which face poor communities of color, such as the drug war, the prison pipeline, the shit education funding that's going on, the crumbling infrastructure, the lack of actual urban investment in favor of instead money market investments all of these things, he's failing to actually even speak to those things. He's just saying, I'm a white man. I'm a white, I'm a white man. And my whiteness is, the only reason I'm even alive is because people of color have died. And then at the same time, you have these imbeciles at Harvard saying, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, white lives, and white lives have no uh, 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 value, and I'm a, uh, 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 a debater, and uh, 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 I belong in this campus. Fuck off, you don't belong in that campus. I didn't get to finish college because I didn't have the money, but I'm sure as fuck sure that you're either there because your parents have a lot of money or because you're just a black guy. <laughs> fuck right off with that. These are the things which are making up our modern world, and not just our modern world, but these are the things which are sort of building to shape the future world because quite unfortunately, companies themselves are not only being overrun with these imbeciles themselves, but they're also shifting away from the notions of merit. They'll look to accreditation, but they'll also look to political persuasion. This is going to destroy our society. This is going to destroy our society unless it is stopped. We can hope, we can hope, that these children, when they get out into the real world, when they leave college eventually, will find themselves tripping and falling and feeling their faces pressed 
as they smack clean against the cold, hard pavement below their feet. We can really hope this is going to happen and that they will wake up to things, that they will understand that the world is not a safe space, that there is not emotional bubble wrap on every sharp corner that they might bump into. We can hope this, but the reality is it's probably not going to happen. They're going to fall. They're going to crumble. They're going to wither and die, or they're going to become feckless, helpless little goons who are just dependent on the state, which itself will at that point be more or less funded by the output of a very increasingly shrinking portion of the population which is able to actually produce and contribute anything for society. Or, alternately, these helpless little shit heels will just actually stay in academia. In which case, a new sort of serf class will emerge. Those who are either opposed to this new orthodoxy, who end up finding themselves just obligated to become just basic laborers, basic wage slaves, without the degrees in gender studies which are apparently going to be necessary for tomorrow's tech jobs. Or alternately, those who just couldn't be bothered to actually get into the fight, those who were naturally destined to just go and find a good job that they could work in and pay the bills and get by. But because they don't toe the line, they're not welcome in the professional world quite as much. And either which way, you'll have that, and then you'll have a new academic class. You'll have a new professional academic class who taken the teachings that have already corrupted them and are already sowing the seeds of destruction for the society that we live in right now, and they will distill them. They will make them more powerful. They will make them more insane. Because if you think what we see as microaggressions and the demands for safe spaces in our current day and age are mind-bogglingly ridiculous, Wait until you see what happens when a new generation has been able to filter those through their own senses of self-righteousness and perceptions of oppression and privilege to where no one is safe. We're already starting to see it. The LGBTQ societies are already starting to regard gay men as privileged. <laughs> well, throughout history, in the LGBTQ alphabet soup that has comprised that movement of activists, there's probably not too many demographics which have been as brutally murdered, either in great number or just brutally and horrifically murdered one by one, as perhaps gay men. But, but they have privilege, you know? just as men have privilege with their shorter lifespans, their war deaths, their workplace deaths, their suicides, their homelessness rates, their inability to see and raise their children. This is the future someone chose. It sure as fuck wasn't me. But it's one we seem barreling towards, and it seems to get worse every day. So fuck, I mean... I guess after 25 minutes, that's really my rant. I mean, I don't really have much else to offer. The question could be, what do we do about it? This is where we come to a problem, though, because the only thing we can really do about it is... political movements to reform public narratives. And that... requires organization. And organization requires organization under a single banner. An organization under a single banner, especially when it's simply in opposition to an orthodoxy itself, inevitably becomes one that is comprised of multiple factions with different ideals, all fighting for different causes. If we could, can or could find a way to organize the anti-social justice movement under a single banner, in such a way that it is understood that the differences of opinion shared between those who make up the broader coalition, the factions which make up the broader whole, that those could be set aside as they have to, unfortunately, in the name of ideology, then there might be hope. If the 
alt-right and the neoconservative right and the traditionalist conservative sets, as well as the classical liberals and the libertarians and the right libertarians and the left libertarians and the anarchists and anyone who values individualism and anybody who still defines racism as prejudice against one based on race without the bullshit notions of privilege and power flung in there simply for hipster gratification. If those who can see truth and reason and empirical rational sense in the face of this growing orthodoxy which is itself a growing social menace can band together with the understanding that their fights about things such as God and economics and even military power and really you name it band together in alliance just for long enough to defeat the enemy that is the social justice menace to my mind there may be hope but in that same vein the hope of seeing such a coalition evolve is it is a faint hope itself I I honestly don't even know how to begin going about it so that's my rant Thank you for sitting through it. It's been a while since I sat in front of a microphone for just a half an hour and just let my thoughts loose. So, if you've made it this far, I appreciate your time. And I suppose I'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>